How's everybody doing today? This is First Key. I've got another video for you guys. Um, this is going to be all about overclocking the MSI 6950 um, Twin Frozer 3 uh, video card. Now, this is one of the only non reference 6950s, or actually, I think it's the only non reference 6950 that can be unlocked um, to a higher number of shaders. In this case, uh, the number of shaders that would be on a 6970 card so you can essentially bump this up to the performance level of a um, 6970 card with a slightly lower price this is a pretty expensive 6950 um, but it's great bang for your buck when you uh, are able to um, unlock and even maybe even uh, overclock it and I'm going to be showing you how to do both so, um, if you're lucky enough to, enough to grab one of these cards when they are in stock, I had to watch it for about two weeks before I was able to grab mine, um, then you're going to get a card that one is either laser cut or two is not laser cut. Uh, and this is a huge distinction that you're going to have to make, uh, although you're not going to be able to find out until you actually try to unlock shaders. Um, if the card is laser cut, then you cannot unlock the shaders. It's been done by MSI. And it so far, based on the things I've seen, uh, it's really a coin toss. Um, some shipments are laser cut, some shipments are not laser cut. I ordered mine on, I believe, October 7th, and it arrived on the 13th, uh, and it was not laser cut, and I was indeed able to uh, unlock my shaders, as I'll show you in a minute. Now, um, a few things we're going to need are GPU-Z, as you should already have if you've got a, a, a new graphics card. And MSI Afterburner, which you should also have uh, downloaded if you're looking into doing any overclocking. Um, yeah. So once you've got those things, all the links for those can be found in the description. So if you need any of those, um, you can look for it down there. Um, I'll close this stuff. Uh, this is going to come with, um, in the description, there'll be a link to a zip file. Uh, that I've composed here. It's got all of these things except for this uh, stock um, BIOS here. I just uh, that's a backup of my. Um, it's actually not even stock. That's actually the upgraded one. But uh, the point is that's not going to be there. Uh, the important things here are uh, these three um, things here. We're going to be uh, booting into and flashing our cards BIOS with. Um, now the. Uh, debate between on this card is that there is a switch on the side of the card that many say is a dual BIOS switch, and it is not advertised as a dual BIOS card, and I have not seen anything to support that it is dual BIOS. Um, so I'm going to say that it's probably not. It's probably and I, I take this with a grain of salt because I'm not 100% positive, but I think it's just a fan speed. Um, switch rather than two um, BIOSes that have different fan speeds. So I, if you do somehow have a, uh, a bad flash and your card doesn't work, um, I can't guarantee that it's not going to hurt your card, but it's almost never going to hurt your card. Um, very small margin of error that's, that anything's going to happen to your card. But there is the possibility, so keep that in mind. Um, if you're willing to do that, go for it. Otherwise, don't. <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing we're going to do is you're going to need a 2 gigabyte um, flash drive. And we're going to use uh, the NTFS floppy setup.exe that I have included in that zip folder. So we're going to double click on that. Make sure you pick the right drive. Don't want to erase anything else. Pick the right drive and hit start. Leave these unless you somehow know that you need to click them. Um, hit start. Let it do its thing. And it's going to, <clears throat> like it says, erase all existing data on the disk. So if you've got stuff on your flash drive, back it up first. And once you do that, um, it's going to format. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Some of my throat. We can go over to um, my computer. As you can see, it's going to format it as a removable disk. My flash drive is 8 gigs. Um, and you'll see these three folders here, or these three files, rather. Um, 
and what you're going to want to do is I have these three so you're going to want to bring these three over onto your um, flash drive <coughs> after you've done that uh, you can go ahead and restart your computer and you're going to want to boot into your flash drive if you don't know how to boot into your flash drive you probably should not be unlocking the shaders on a $330 graphics card in the first place so what it's going to do is going to bring you up into a GUI for uh, DOS or DOS, I don't know how you say it um, it's going to be a lot of strange stuff I didn't know what to do at first so what you actually have to do is instead of using the GUI hit escape and it's going to take you to a command prompt at which point you're going to enter a command you'll see at the very bottom it'll say C like colon and then a little greater than sign you enter this ATI flash with a capital A space hyphen P space hyphen F space zero space R6950 PEX dot bin and once you do that you can hit enter it'll un uh, flash the BIOS on your card and uh, it'll say complete and um, you can enter cont to continue it'll bring you back into the command prompt and then you can hit control it delete to restart your computer uh, and get you out of the command prompt once you restart into that um, you can open GPZ and you should see right here that shaders will say 1536 uh, if it does, that means your shaders have com uh, have successfully unlocked to um, 6970 levels, um, and that means your card has not been laser cut, and you're one of the lucky ones. Um, if your card has been laser cut, it will say 1,408, which is the stock number of shaders. Um, there's a small chance that the flashing just did mess up, um, and if it did, and it actually didn't hurt your card, then go back, try it again, maybe it'll work again. Um, it's worth trying again. That's what I'm saying. Um, so that's basically the meat of this video is we've just uh, unlocked the shaders on our card and uh, it's now operating almost at, um, or at least in terms of shaders, at 6970 levels. Now, obviously what you're going to want to do is um, overclock the card to at least 6970 levels. Um, with uh, MSI Afterburner, I personally didn't have to actually change anything to allow um, the increase and decrease of the core clock and memory clocks and everything here. Oops. Um, I don't know if that's because of something I did earlier. If it is, um, then you're going to need to change some stuff. My point is, if MFI, MSI Afterburner does not let you bring the core clock above 900 megahertz, um, and it doesn't let you bring the memory clock above 1,325 megahertz, then uh, you should follow what I'm doing now. Otherwise, um, have at it, and I guess you don't need to watch the rest of the video. Um, so I've got Notepad open here. Um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to open up uh, your Program Files folder, and you're going to go to MSI Afterburner. And then you're going to open up the MSI Afterburner.cfg file. Uh, you can go to the very bottom of this uh, file here, and make sure you open that Notepad, by the way. Uh, go to the very bottom here, and you'll see the ATI ADLHAL header. Um, what you're going to want to do is take this code. It'll be in the description. Copy it. Go back into here, and you're going to overwrite these first three parts. So it says, I confirm that I'm aware of unofficial overclocking limitations and fully understand that MSI will not provide me any support on it. So that's saying, by doing this, you are technically voiding the warranty on your card, um, overclocking it. I, I, It's probably not really, really voiding the warranty on your card, but they won't provide you support, and they'll probably... Uh, if, if you cause any damage to your card because of overclocking, they're not going to replace it. If they find out that it happened because it's overclocking. It's it's kind of ambiguous. Anyways, um, once you do that, you can save. I close and reopen MSI Afterburner. Okay, so here's Afterburner open up again. Um, the core clock. Oh. Well, hey, there you have it. 
I guess I hadn't restarted it, and I just assumed that that was the max it could go. Um, it has unlocked it even further. And uh, there you go. Okay, so um, with that, you have now successfully unlocked, or let's say, removed the limits on MSI Afterburner. So now you can actually overclock your card. Now, I'm not going to bring in my core voltage because um, it's kind of unnecessary, but what I am going to do is enter 950 megahertz for the core clock. And for the memory clock, let's say 1350 megahertz. Um, let's fan speed, stay at auto, and like I said, we're not going to be changing our um, core voltage. So we're going to apply. If we look down here, you can see the GPU clock and the memory clock have both increased. And you can see over here on my um, hardware monitor for my graphics card, the um, core clock has jumped up to 950 when, when it's not uh, defaulting to 450 because it does that at idle. Um, Naturally, this is going to make your card run a little bit hotter. Right now, it's at 58. And if I bring it back, let's save this to number 2. And if I go back to 1 and apply them, which is uh, default uh, speeds, you'll see it's going to jump back down from 58. Just for fun. Let's kick up the fan speed. You can probably hear that in the background. See the fan speed jumps up here, and this is going to go down probably about to 55 at idle. Um, anyways, point is, the more you bring up your clock, the more you bring up uh, your memory clock, especially your core voltage, the farther up your um, temperatures are going to go. I'd say anything over 75 is a no-no zone. Um, when you're benchmarking with something like Furmark, um, the 100% GPU usage is not going to be something you'll see during uh, like real gameplay, like playing a game. Um, it's going to typically um, be only during benchmarks. So if it tops farther than 75 degrees uh, during a benchmark, you probably don't have a whole lot to worry about. Play a, full, a really demanding game and see what happens. Anyways, guys, that is about it. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's stretched on for quite a while, um, but hopefully you know a little bit more about um, unlocking the card um, and overclocking the card in the end. I'm going to play around with this and hopefully uh, upload a video later. Um, I am in the process of building a machine. Uh, I only have my uh, video card right now. This card is actually in a 2004 pre-built Dell XPS 400. So... As embarrassing as that is, um, it still works, and I can actually run games at uh, highest resolution, highest detail, although my uh, CPU still does bottleneck. Um, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Please comment. Um, any help, post in, the uh, post in the comments. I'll see if I can help you guys out. Um, subscribe. There's a lot more computer stuff to come. I know I have some Minecraft stuff on my channel. Um, eventually I'll be doing more of that stuff too but um, this is what I'm focusing on now uh, so I will see you guys later and um, enjoy your new card